Now, admittedly, we had to do a bit of boring infrastructure work. But the benefit is, you now have the latest release of PHP, you have Nginx installed, you have Laravel Valet installed, which allows you to instantly visit a project in the browser without any configuration. We have MySQL set up. We are connecting to it through SQL Pro, in my case. Everything's looking really good. And we also have Composer installed on our machine so that we can require any project we need. For example, maybe you like a tool called PHP Spec. Just pull it in and you're done. It's great. So with all of that setup out of the way, we can switch back to learning Laravel. Now we've already learned that we can define routes within our web file, and then we can load views by referencing one of these files here. So the home page loads a welcome view, and here's our welcome view. Now I'm gonna delete this as we did before and replace it. And all I wanted to do right now is spit out hello and then a person's name. So with vanilla PHP, you know that you could say PHP echo name, or we can also use the shorthand. However, right now, the name variable doesn't exist, right? So Laravel is going to squawk, and it says undefined variable name. OK. We're going to switch back to our routes web file. And right now, we're loading a view, but we didn't give the view any data. We have to be explicit about that. Now, we can do that by specifying the second argument here. I can say I want name to be equal to world. OK, let's come back and give it a refresh. And sure enough, it's working again. So if I change this to Laracas, refresh, and now it says hello Laracas. And this will be the same for as many fields as you need to pass through. Now, having said that, it's possible, if you've read tutorials, that you also see something along the lines of this, with name is world. Now, if I come back and give that a refresh, we're going to still see the same thing. It's just a different way to do it. As a general rule of thumb, I often just use the second argument, but a lot of people prefer this method as well. It's up to you. Another thing you'll often see me do is maybe you have it stored as a variable, and we'll say my own name. OK, well here, you could say name is name, and that would work. But if you wish, PHP also offers a function that will do this for you. You can say compact name, and it's going to spit out the exact same thing. It'll just create an array with a key of name and then a value of the variable called name once again. Refresh, we get the same thing. So if that were the case, you could do age equals 31, and then you could pass those through here. And that's yet another option for you. As always, it's entirely up to you. Why don't we try this? Maybe we have a list of tasks to be generic. This could come from a database. It could come from an API call, anything you want. Go to the store, finish my screencast, clean the house. All right, so we have a list of tasks, and I now want to pass those to my view. Next, the view is going to filter through those. Now we could say PHP for each tasks as task. Just use the traditional shorthand. And then, I don't know, maybe a list item where we could echo out the task. And we'll then wrap this all within an unordered list. OK, so if we come back and give this a refresh, sure enough, we have a list of our items. And uh, this is fine, but even though PHP itself uh, can be a templating language, it didn't necessarily grow to be an overly good one. It's pretty verbose. So you'll notice that if we go back to our resources file, it's not welcome.php, it's welcome.blade.php. We'll talk about this quite a bit more in future episodes. But to be quick, Blade is Laravel's templating engine. So Laravel will read a Blade file, compile it down to vanilla PHP, and then use that to serve the file. So with Blade, we get some special helpers. For example, rather than writing all of this out, I can replace it with an at symbol. For each tasks as task, I can get rid of that. And then this can just become in for each. Next, to echo out data, we can wrap it within braces. And think of this as the equivalent of PHP echo this value. OK, let's come back and give it a refresh. And we're still going to get the exact same thing. But I think you can agree this is much easier to write. So as always, it's going to be true for everything. So in general, for any uh, PHP directive or condition, you can just replace it with the at simple equivalent. So if followed by end if or while, and then end while. There's quite a few. 
So now that you've learned how to pass data to your views, well, what if that data isn't hard-coded, but instead maybe it's stored in a database? Hmm, we'll take a look at that in the next episode.